Hi guys, it's Tara Sell for Mint Owl Studio, and today I'm sharing a video with you on how to use Copic Coloring on Craft and the A Pirate's Life stamp set to create your very own treasure map. So to get started, I'm going to do a little bit of die cutting to get some panels um, to do my stamping on. So I'm super excited because this last weekend I asked Hubby if he could upgrade my camera slash cell phone stand that I use to do my filming. And I had had the same one since I started almost a year ago that we just kind of put together impromptu and um, asked him if he could widen it out for me so I could get more space to work underneath the camera. And he did that like no sweat in like three minutes. And now I have this huge space where I can even do some like die cutting underneath the camera. So I'm super excited about it. So anyway, as you can see, I now have my two panels. I used some Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle dies to cut those out of some craft cardstock. And then I'm using Lawn Fawn walnut ink to stamp my images from the A Pirate's Life stamp set onto this craft cardstock. So I'm using the walnut ink because I think the brown looks more treasure map vintagey than blackwood. So that was why I made that choice. The um, Lawn Fawn stamps, or the Lawn Fawn inks, excuse me, are also Copic friendly, so you're able to Copic color when you use those inks and they don't bleed too much. So, anywho, I'm just stamping my scene onto this craft um, paper here, and you can see when I do the wave at the bottom, I'm just wiping off half of that ink with my finger and then stamping just smaller waves. So, it's just kind of a way to stretch your stamps there. So this Pirate's Life stamp set is fantastic because it comes with a whole bunch of little scene building stamps that you can use to create all kinds of really fun pirate scenes. So I decided to create a treasure map here. So I thought that this little um, dotted line doodly here would be perfect to stamp as the path from the treasure to the map and all that good stuff. So that is actually from the Butterfly Kisses stamp set. Um, from Mint Owl Studio that came out in May also with the Pirate's Life stamp set. And I just thought it was a fun way to combine these two stamp sets that you normally wouldn't think would go together. And then I'm stamping a bunch of little jewels and gold coins and goodies around that path, just in case you were confused that by following this path, you will find treasure at the end. So <laughs> that's just to make sure that you understand that's where the treasure is. So the pirate ship is on the water following the map and you can see where he's going because I've put the map above the pirate ship for him. So that's my vision here for this particular card. So I stamped a little sentiment on the front and then I'm going to go ahead and finish off the inside by putting the treasure chest because if you've made it to the inside of the card, you've clearly followed the map and you deserve the treasure. And then I'm going to put an additional sentiment um, just to create turn this into a birthday card specifically. So that's the inside of the cards and I just did that stamping while my stamp sets and ink were out and then I will work on coloring the front panels. So this is my hex chart from Sandy Alnock and it is designed to put your Copics on so you can see which colors coordinate with um, which other colors of Copic markers. And I printed that out both on Nina Solar White cardstock and on Craft cardstock. And this is um, just super handy in finding another way to kind of stretch your Copics and do some, some different things with them. Um, the key to Copics on Craft is that they dry a very different color than they go on. So having that hex chart is really handy on the craft paper already because I can see what the color will look like once it's dry because it tends to lighten up quite a bit from what it looks like when you put it on. So I'm doing super simple Copic coloring here because I've never done Copic coloring on craft to be 100% honest with you. So this is kind of an experiment for me and I thought these images were nice because I really only have to do like blue and brown and I could keep it pretty simple because I'm going to vintage the heck out of this thing later and just distress it all up. So if the coloring wasn't perfect, you probably wouldn't notice. So what I'm kind of doing is I'm coloring one image and then I'm skipping past because I'm doing the exact same thing on the second card. I am creating two of the same card just because that's something that I'm trying to make sure that I do these days is create more than one at a time just to ensure that I'm making the best use out of my time and while I have my supplies out and all that stuff. So I'm going to do all the coloring for you guys once, but I'm not going to make you sit through it twice because I'll tell you a secret it's the same. So now that I have my water colored, I'm coloring the little ship and I'm just using a couple different tones of brown. Like I said, super simple coloring, just putting down one tone and then putting in a little bit of shadows with a darker tone. And um, I don't know what just happened there, but I bumped some, something clearly. Like even with my wider space, I'm still clumsy. Like, you know, some things never change, right? So I'm going to color the little windows and they look really dark now, but that blue is going to lighten up like a whole bunch. You can already see on that first one that it's like way lighter than it was when I started. 
So that is part of the key to Copic coloring on craft is that you just really need to know that these colors are not going to stay the same as they were when you started. So the sails were kind of tricky because I just wasn't sure because normally I would leave those white and then just kind of put some little bit of gray shading. Um, the map also because it's also like supposed to be whitish. But I'm coloring on craft so nothing is white to begin with. So I just decided that well the craft color is white in this world. So I went in with some warm grays and just kind of did some shadowing on those sails. And I thought that turned out pretty fun. Like for the vintage look that I'm going for, that was kind of exactly what I was after. So I kept having to go deeper. I didn't think I would need very many colors to do the shadows, but it turned out that as the ink was drying on this craft, it was lightening up so much that I felt like I could barely see it. So I kept kind of adding just a little bit more and a little bit more until I liked what I was seeing. So then up here at the top, I'm going to go over all of the little coins and the jewels. And actually, I probably didn't even need to do this because I end up coming over the top of all these later with my um, Jelly Roll Stardust sparkly pens. And they are super, super sparkly. And they end up just kind of covering up my Copic coloring entirely. So I didn't really need to go in and color each little gem individually. But hey, I wasn't sure at this point if that's what I was going to do because that's how my brain works. I don't really plan all the way through to the end. So I was just rolling with it. I had my Copics out and I'm like, I might as well get these bad boys colored up. So I'm just kind of doing a rainbow of gems because if I found a treasure chest, that's what I would hope was in it was gold coins and beautiful, beautiful gem rainbows. Because honestly, I don't know what I would do with like a treasure chest full of gems. Like in this day and age, would that... Obviously, it's worth something, but what would you do with it? Do you take it to a jeweler? Do you like, I don't know, but it would be really pretty to look at. So that, <laughs> that would be like the thing I would be super excited about. So I'm using a couple different red tones on the X because I really want that X marks the spot to be prominent there. And then my coloring is pretty much done. I did go in on one ship and kind of put like an outline around it. Like when you're coloring on white paper, sometimes if you put like a really light blue outline, it kind of makes your image pop and it's really pretty. So I just was trying to figure out if that would work. I just didn't think that it was worth it. It kind of dried out way lighter than, so I just didn't do it on the second one. So now here's where I'm coming in with all the sparkle. So these are just a variety of sparkly gel pens that I have in my stash. Most of them are Stardust Jelly Rolls. This particular gold yellow one right here, no idea where it came from. It's kind of one of those things that I think that I had like in second grade and it just stuck with me into adulthood. I don't know, but it's beautiful and it's the perfect color for gold coins. So I used it. So now I'm just going to take all those different gem colors and just color right in. It does color, um, color over the lines of the stamped image, but I wasn't super concerned because like I said, I'm going to distress the heck out of this puppy. So I'm just trying to get the color on there, but you can see how sparkly they are like in the light, like it's nice and shimmery. I'm just loving the view from so much, like such a wider view with my new camera stand. It's just, it's really cool. It's a super simple camera stand too, guys. I mean, it's literally made out of one by fours. It's not fancy at all, <laughs> but it just works so much better now that it's wider. Yay. So I'm coming in with my white gel pen and I'm putting in some highlights on these images. And these are going to kind of get toned down a little bit when I do my vintaging because I'm going to put ink over the top of the white and it's going to kind of dull it out, but you still get the highlight. So I thought that was um, good to kind of bring these images to life, kind of add a little bit of a cartoony look to this treasure map here and just kind of give it a little something extra. So now that the images are all colored and they're getting dried out, now we are going to start turning this into a really old distressed treasure map. So I think it looks cool like that. You could probably just leave it like that, but I wanted this to look like it had been around the block a time or two and that like the Goonies found it in their attic. That's what I wanted here. That's what I was going for. That's definitely One-Eyed Willie's pirate ship and I needed to make sure that you knew <laughs> that this was an old, old treasure map. So I started with some vintage photo distress ink and I'm just putting it on there. Um, it turns out with this craft card stock that I have, the vintage photo wasn't actually adding as much color as it usually does when I'm distressing just because the craft card stock is so dark. So I came in with some walnut stain and I added that around the edges. So now I'm just doing the same thing to the second panel. So in case you missed it the first time, you can see some more ink blending here and I'm just putting that darker brown on. So this is like my first step. So, and then you want to make sure for the vintage look that you you go over the inside of the image also. Don't just put it on the outside because the whole thing needs to look vintagey. 
So to finish off the inside of the card, I'm just kind of adding some of that ink over that treasure chest corner. And then I will come in with my little gold um, sparkly pen and just kind of color in the gold gems. Well, I guess they're not gems, they're coins. They're very clearly gold coins inside the treasure chest. I'll make the gold coins gold and then I'll put the little accents on the chest and make them gold. And that's all I'm gonna do for the inside. That will complete the inside, but it gives it just a little bit of sparkly pop and makes it kind of coordinate with the outside of the card with that vintage look. So I thought that was just a fun way to finish off the inside, which is something else that I'm trying to do in addition to making card sets is to be a little bit more aware of the inside of my cards and make them, make them match the outside. So now I'm bringing my panels back in and I'm going to start spritzing with some water. So this is going to start making it look even older. So you spritz that water on top of the distress ink, let it sit there for a minute and it's going to wick away some of that ink. And then when you daub it up with a paper towel, it's going to suck that water up and leave some water spots behind on your panel. So I did this twice because I didn't think I had enough water spots the first time. And it's really only wicking away where the distress ink is. It's not really affecting the Copic coloring or anything. So, um, it, you can see it more around the outside of the panel than you can on the inside. So now I wanted even more distress. So I um, smushed some of that walnut stain ink on my craft mat and added some water. And then I took a paintbrush and just flicked some splatters of that walnut stain ink over the top of this whole thing. And then came in with my heat tool and dried it because I'm way too lazy to wait for things to dry naturally. So now you can see it's really starting to look kind of old and yucky. Like... I'm starting to really like it. I'm starting to believe that this is One-Eyed Willie's pirate ship. So once I did that, I decided, well, if this map had been traveling around in people's back pocket for centuries, it would not be in perfect shape around the outside. So I did a couple little tears on the side and I kind of curled the edges up towards the front of those little tears. And then I busted back out my walnut stain distress ink and I inked over the top of those tears so that the back of the paper that was showing through didn't look shiny and new. And so I added that and then I took my Tim Holtz edge distressing tool here and went around the edge of it and just kind of distressed the heck out of this paper. So I owned this tool for an embarrassingly long time before I figured out how to use it. You really, inside each of those little grooves, if you guys haven't seen this tool before, is basically a little teeny tiny razor blade poking out. And if you just stick the edge of your paper in there and just literally scribble that tool back and forth over the edge of your paper, it just kind of shreds the heck out of the edge of your paper and makes it look really distressy. So when I first got it, I could not figure out what I was supposed to do with that tool. <laughs> I had to Google it. Like I had to watch a Google video of somebody doing it. Anyway, <laughs> not one of my finer moments. And then I kind of curled each of the four corners up. And now these maps are looking like treasure maps. Like I think they look pretty nice and distressy. So now I'm going to pop these up off of my craft card bases with some foam tape and I'm just putting a little bit of foam tape on the back of each one and then I'll stick that right in the middle and you can see the contrast of the original craft versus the distressed craft that we have done here. And then that is going to finish up the cards guys. So I went in and I thought about adding some glossy accents but then I changed my mind. So you can see the inside. Here's a nice close-up view of that distressy grungy treasure map and then the inside of the card. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, check out the description box below to be able to follow Mint Owl Studio on social media and we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.